National Maritime Museum project began in early 2013. We were shortlisted amongst 64 people from around the world, probably because we'd done the National Maritime Museum in Australia. Really for us, it was a world scale building and we were trying to win a competition, but we were also trying to explore really what kind of architecture do we genuinely believe in at that scale and in a different, completely different uh, environment than our own. And that really became all about not creating a museum as an object plonked on a site, but a museum that was articulated into parts that the community could engage with as much as any tourist uh, coming to, to the project. We also went further than that and looked at the landscape and the city around it and tried to see how the building itself could become a fulcrum of the movements through the city to the museum, almost like it's a great community centre. The National Maritime Museum of China is a very significant project for the country because China has always been concerned that the world doesn't understand how significant its maritime history has been and it's located in Tianjin, which is the main port city for Beijing, uh, which really serves the whole of northern China. So they see it as a very emblematic project, both for the history and for the current uh, maritime activity that happens through and in, into and out of China. So the, the structure's made up of a series of portal frames, which you can see in these ribs. These ribs then, or portal frames, lean out and make the gesture out over the water. And it's a cantilever of 45 metres. We needed a bracing system and a very logical bracing system to actually hold that structure out there. So what we've done is we've used an algorithm system together with Arabs to develop a bracing system that what we're doing is really reinforcing or showing exactly where the bracing or the stresses are to create that cantilever. So you can see here in this part, the bracing is quite light but as it comes further and out towards the cantilever as it's going through, we've had to add extra patterns or lacing or bracing, if you like, to create that structure. So that creates a natural pattern that we're really interested in. So when you're inside the building, you're seeing this expression of the portal frame and the bracing, and you're seeing that bracing increase at the cantilever. So you're very aware inside the building of what it's doing structurally. Working in China is in incredibly rewarding from the fact that you can start to adapt uh, ideas that are only dreamt of in Australia. The idea of heating and cooling a building of this size, 80,000 square metres, is a significant power source. So in this particular project we employed the idea of geothermal piles where basically what we do with the water to create the heating and cooling of this building is we pump that water down into the Earth's core, where the Earth's core's temperature ranges from one degree, from either 20, 20 to 21 degrees. So it's a very stable temperature. So what happens is that water then goes down through into those cores, gets, the, gets to the temperature of 21 or 22 degrees, and is brought back into the building to keep the environment within this building as stable as possible. A further aspect as we developed the design was the realisation that we could use local fabrication techniques to great benefit for construction efficiency, but also to employ the community in the project. And an example of that is that we're looking for local ceramic techniques that are used there for the cladding system, and also local boating uh, techniques for the interior lining of, of all of the halls. So that became, has become a really exciting aspect of the project and it also dovetails out into the landscape where we went somewhat beyond the site and promoted ideas like creating a, a real fishing village, a real working village, so that that would employ people um, in, in the project, but also um, that would become a tourist destination in its own right. And the third importance of that is you're able to see current maritime activity in relation to historic uh, maritime past activity. So there's this correspondence that you're not walking into a mausoleum or a thing about just the past, you're walking into a place that's trying to sort of relate the past to the future of China.